guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the youthful Hatfield Town here on Football Manager 2020. Uh, we are still at Hatfield Town, as I said. We are well into the new season. 17 games into the new season, we are in the Vanarama National uh, League South, which is two divisions now below the Football League. We are so close to Football League glory. So, so close. Uh, we've had a few incomings and outgoings. I'll show you those in a second. Uh, I'm just looking at some of the stats, actually. We have the 22nd highest attendance in a league of 22 teams. Awesome. Even Malden and Tiptree are attracting more fans than us. That's the... Yeah, um, don't really know what to say to that. Uh, in terms of the uh, the league table, we are currently top. We are four points clear at the top, although Wildstone, who are behind us, uh, do have a game in hand. So we're potentially a point ahead, which at this stage is pretty good. There are 42 matches this season. Um, again, for those of you that don't know, the way you work out how many matches you play is you take the number of teams in the league. So there's 22, you d double it to get 44. And then because you don't play yourself, you take two off and you get 42. So um, we're about a third-ish of the way through the season. A third-ish. Somewhere between a third and a half, let's say. Uh, we are in the FA Cup first round. We're about to play that. We got through the qualifying rounds, so we are in the first round proper. We are playing Scunthorpe away from home, and that is the first match of the video. So uh, I've got a big one for you here, guys. And then we've got the FA Trophy third qualifying round coming up uh, in November. We're currently in November as well, so actually it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, the reason I'm here is because I want to show you this. So this is the Scunthorpe match report. Now that we've got the new tactics in, in place, I have done a little bit of tweaking with it, not too much, uh, mainly to get the aerial um, match plan. And I have signed a target man who I'll introduce you to in a second, who is uh, part of that plan and doing quite well with it as well, I, I, uh, I should say. In terms of their strengths here, the first one that springs to mind is a smart squad that makes good decisions. So um, putting a high press on them might not necessarily work because they're good at you know making decisions on where to pass the ball and things like that. They kind of play a similar system to us, but they have a slightly deeper midfield. So we have the two midfielders on this line and then the centre attacking midfielder here. So they play a similar system but drop deep. That means our cam here is going to be a little bit congested, especially with the central midfielder and then the two DMs. So this is an area in which we might struggle to get the ball. However, this area... Uh, we should get the ball a lot. And if we use our fullbacks against their wingers, uh, the idea really is to get their wingers to play more on the halfway line. So we'll see if we can do that. George Williams is good at right back. Uh, George Williams isn't even in the team right now, so that's interesting. But Troyd represents very good quality at left back. He is there. I'm really looking for things like, are they good in the air? Impressive standard of quality, uh, passing quality amongst this group of players. Wilkinson's ability to win the ball back may help to combat this. So that's one of the stats there. And I like the fact that it actually names your players now um, that it thinks would work well uh, against these um, traits, I suppose. I was about to say strengths again, but traits. Uh, so up here as well, we've also got 10 of the 28 assists conceded in the last 20 matches have come from crosses. Ek Pyong's aerial ability may help to exploit this. We've also got Whitnell's work ethic being named there. Wooten's heading ability. I'm not actually planning on playing Wooten in this game. I forgot I still had him. I thought I'd released him, but there we go. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the stats and the, the tactics side of things. Let's talk about the transfers very quickly, uh, and then we'll go into the actual match. So in terms of incomings and outgoings, let's go through the outgoings again. So it's all loans, basically, apart from Fitzhugh. And I talked about Fitzhugh last time. Uh, oh, and Sheridan left on a free as well. But um, Jabali Tora Hull, I still can't get over his name. He's gone out on loan to Loughborough. And then Duncan Kelby has gone out on loan to Penisuic, I want to say. Penicuic. Someone tell me how to pronounce that, please. Oh, music. I forgot to get the music on as well. Let's do that. Uh, let's choose something... Random. There we go. Nice. Now I should be able to forget about that for a little bit. Uh, in terms of incomings, so we've got Thomas Davy has returned on loan from Scunthorpe, so I don't think he'll be eligible to play in this match. I'm actually paying a fee. They weren't interested in loaning him out to me, so I actually had to pay a fee for that to happen. 
Um, fortunately, I'm quite strong in the centre-back department right now because I've also signed this guy, Edon Pruti, who is Bosnian. Uh, he's a very, very good centre-back. Ignore the stars for a second and look at the stats. He's got 13 heading, 13 marking, 13 tackling, 12 positioning. He's not the strongest, but he's got good jumping reach as well of 12. I'm very, very happy to have him in the team. Very, very happy. He's just over six foot, six foot two-ish, um, and he's done all right. He's played four times for us. He got an assist. These are in non-competitive fixtures. He hasn't yet made his debut. But if uh, Davy can't play against his parent team, then Pruti will be playing against Scunthorpe. We've also got uh, Louis Dunn, who's joined on loan from uh, Bristol Rovers. Now he's scored on his debut, I believe. Uh, he's had three appearances, one goal. He is our current target man player. Uh, again, he's got very good stats. 13 heading, 12 first touch, which is impressive for a target man. They're normally not known for being good with their feet. Uh, teamwork and bravery is a little bit on the low side. He's very determined, though. He's got excellent strength, jumping reach and balance as well. And again, have someone who's 187 centimeters tall. That, that is six foot three, I believe. Six foot is around 180 centimeters. It's two and a half inches in a uh, sorry, two and a half centimeters in an inch. So if you're 187, uh, let's say it's six foot, and then say three lots of, of two and a half, even though it isn't. Uh, so let's yeah, he's, he's six foot three ish. So to have good balance when you're that tall, that's a pretty good stat to have. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how he does in the match. We've also got uh, Plamen Zekov who's on loan from uh, Lockhall, who are... Where is Lockhall? Northern Ireland. I won't do the accent. He's a left winger. Uh, he was brought in because we had injuries to O'Keefe, and he's kind of filled the gap quite nicely. O'Keefe is back now, I believe, though, so um, there'll be a little bit of a fight between them. He could play as an advanced playmaker out wide, which is quite a good stat to have. And he's a, a winger, although he's very bad at crossing and dribbling. What's his pace like? Didn't actually check this. 11. Mm. Mm. Yeah, not the greatest. But he's good cover. This guy, though, Mike King, he's very good. I signed him from Stevenage. Uh, he's basically the, re the new replacement for Fitzhugh. Uh, but, I mean, Galbraith was doing well in that position and Galbraith got injured. So that's why King was brought in. Uh, I wanted to try and loan him in and Stevenage weren't interested. I could have actually signed him on a free transfer. Um, but they wanted, I think, 80,000 in compensation. So I managed to negotiate a fee of, what was it now? Can I even check that, thinking about it? Maybe I can. It'd be cool if you could, oh, there we go. Minimum cost, 29,500. Potential cost, including add-ons, 29,500. Cost so far, 31,500. That doesn't quite tell the full story, I don't think, because it was, it was kind of like a base fee with some add-ons and some sell-ons and things like that. But he's done well. Two goals in two appearances and an assist as well. Average rating of 8.1. Uh, I'm quite happy with him. He did cost the same as Fitzhugh, so quite an expensive replacement. But um, so far, so good. And I think that's everyone, because Nixon, Lynch, McGee, they'd already joined for the last episodes, I believe. So I think we're pretty much ready now to head towards Scunthorpe. We are playing them tomorrow. Frame rate issues are still probably going to be a thing in this video. I can't explain it. I really would wish I could explain it, but I really can't. I have no idea why it's doing it. It annoys me as much as it annoys you, I'm sure. It's just, it, it's, it's not even like a frame rate issue. It just, it's like my processor just stops for a minute or two. I've tried restarting my PC. I've tried all sorts. Nothing seems to work. There you go, I did it then. Did it then. It only really is noticeable during matches, but it's it's still annoying. Really annoying. Okay, so we're going into the game. Who was here? Oh yeah, Brunt was here because I was using him in friendlies. So let's let's. Uh, I've got a massive squad now. Bloody hell! Let's have a look and see who's where, shall we? So in goal, we're going to keep Lachlan Robertson. We're going to have Nixon, Pruti, uh, Ekpiong, and Lynch across the back, and then a midfield of Hunt and I'm tempted to bring in O'Loughlin be the more defence minded of the two because he's a ball winning midfielder and Hunt's more of a in this case he's sort of an attacking well, he's, he's sort of a default central midfielder but he could be an attacking midfielder 
Uh, I want to switch the match plan because I think we are going to go with this style. And we're going to play proper non-league against a football league team. No disrespect to any non-league teams. Uh, let's put... Where's Wilkinson, actually? Where is Wilkinson? Why can't I see his name? Where's Wilkinson? <laughs> there he is. We'll put him on the bench instead of Davy. So if he comes off the bench, he'll be in a good position to, uh, to help out. We'll start King at right midfield instead of Galbraith. Um, I do want to start O'K... Oh, do I, actually? No, he's a bit injured still. Man, I've got so many players. Uh, Dunn is going to start up front with Wilson on the bench. Now, Dunn is knackered, as you can see. Uh, what's his fitness, actually? His natural fitness. 14. So, he's got the ability to sort of see out the first half, shall we say. And then maybe second half will switch to something a bit more fluid. Uh, I'm going to put... McGee on the bench instead of Vincent. I feel sorry for Vincent. He's kind of slipped down the pecking order slightly in many respects. I am going to offer him a new contract, though, if he's interested. He seems to be. Because I do want to keep him. It's not like I want to get rid of him. It's just he's not as uh, as prolific as he was, which is fine. There you go. He's happy with that. I'm probably offering them way too much money in terms of wages, by the way. Uh, Matthews or Nixon? Now... Matthews, I believe, is the faster of the two. He's got pace of 12. He's actually getting faster, which is good. Nixon has a pace of... Oh, no, 15. Okay, Nixon. Because we, as much as we want the strength, we do want... Uh, oh, I could check it here, actually. What am I doing? So he's got pace of 15 and strength of 11. Whereas Matthews has strength of 11 and pace of 12. So Nixon is the better choice. Uh, Pruti is kind of knackered. But uh, I think we can get him through. Then we've got Ekpiong, Lynch, Hunt, O'Loughlin, King, uh, Waldron, O'Raw, which I'm actually going to keep because he's, his slide rule passes are just the best. Uh, Zekov and then Dunn up front. And then on the bench, we've got Whitnell, Wilkinson, Carter, Galbraith, Wilson, Dryden, and McGee. Anybody else I want to bring in? It's a real shame that I can't use Davey because I think he'd be awesome in this game. Richmond could potentially be on the bench instead of... Maybe Galbraith. And then he can come on and play right mid uh, left midfield. Wilson can play right midfield if necessary. Let's do this. Let's do this. The more I think about it, the more mistakes I'll make. So let's just head into the game. I really love this skin still. I really love this skin. If you want to know what it is, I called it out in the last episode. So feel free to check that out. I've got a loud crowd today. I need to remember to change the highlights back to key. we go. Right. Good match, lads. Good match. Good start. Great touch, Nixon. I wish we were a little bit more accurate with the long balls. That's a nice pass. It's a shame King decided not to run after it. Has my skin reset? Look how many latest event updates I've got. What the actual? Formations horizontal. No. Formations vertical. There we go. And then you are going to be, I guess, uh, Adam's feedback. Which I always lose. There it is. And then, I mean, we can't have a league table. Latest scores. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Alrighty. Onwards. Thomas with the throw finds Wilson into Burgess. Good ball forward to Ridley, who shoots all wide. Got away with that one, actually. We let him through a little bit too easily for my liking. A little bit too easily. Is this skin broken? Is this skin broken? I'm just going to do this. And then you down here is going to be Adam's feedback. I think I'm going to do that. But then even then, it'll probably appear again here. I don't know why it does that. 
really don't know. Uh, they've actually left a huge gap in midfield there. Hunter and O'Loughlin could really exploit that. Maybe they knew that we were going to play the long ball. So on that note, I'm going to shake things up a little bit and switch to the pace one. I love having these variable match plans now. You can kind of change things on the fly without having to completely redo your entire tactics. Win that. Win that. Alright. Tame shot in the end. I guess Ekpiong didn't want to foul him. Oh, there's the hang. That wasn't even the CPU that time. I don't know what happened there. Deary me. Maybe Streamlabs has an update that I don't know about yet. Right, Waldron O'Raw off, done off. Wilson and McGee both came on. So that fits the pace style a little bit more as well. And now Richmond is on for Zekov. So we've made all our subs. Interesting. It would be cool if we could go to a replay here, actually. It would be cool. Not much happening in this second half. It looks like Pruti's going to have to see out the game. That might be where we lose it, actually. If he gets too tired. Hunt with the free kick. King's header. Oh, yes. Onside? Offside. Was he? I thought he was behind the defender. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, no. He was miles in front. All right. He was behind the defender when he headed it, but not when the ball was played. That was a bit misleading. I don't think you guys saw that replay because of the hang. Oh, that's annoying. That is really annoying. Uh, they've got Harry Pell playing for them. The boy band member, as we referred to him when we saw him play for Cheltenham once. They all had bleach blonde hair. It looked ridiculous. All right, we've gone 3-4-3. They've gone 4-4-2. We are really... Uh, yeah, this could go to a replay. I don't know if I want extra fixtures, really. That was a great header from Nixon. O'Loughlin on the ball now. Nixon again, ball over the top. McGee was never going to win that. He was wrong side, and he's not the best in the air. Nixon again with a good touch. That's a great ball from Robertson as well, picking out King. Round the corner. All right, play it back. Ekpiong, he goes round the corner. Sometimes you do have to go backwards to go forwards. Don't mind that. Wilson's ball in. Shoot, shoot. Oh, <laughs> good save, keeper. And again, you guys didn't see it. All right, you'll see the replay, I hope. Or was that the replay? I think that was the replay. Basically, the ball got crossed in. The defender knocked it down but didn't clear it. And McGee ran onto it and kicked it towards the goal. And the keeper got a good save. Ah, here we go. This is the replay. So Wilson here crosses it in. The defender didn't really clear it. Uh, and again, it stops on that moment. For God's sake. I need to check what's going wrong with my CPU. This is really bad. Alright, nil-nil draw. I think I'm okay with that, actually. Because we've got to play them at home now. I'm okay with that. That's not a bad performance. I mean, it's a football league team. Let's see where this Scunthorpe actually are. Before I start talking about them being a... Uh, uh, where are we? S... They are bottom of League 2, but they're in League 2. Might as well get a sneaky team report while we're here. So, you know, we're, they're two leagues above us, and we've just held them to a nil-nil draw. I'm pretty happy with that. We seem to cause more problems when we went to the pacier style, so I think next match um, I might start with the pacey style and go from there. Uh, yep. We had a friendly against the academy. That's now been cancelled. That's fine. Uh, oh God. Lots of people now watching Waldron O'Raw. He's obviously doing something right. Hunt is suspended. That's an issue. Mind you, Vincent can come back in for this game. Come on, Francis. This is your time, buddy. This is your time. Mind you, this is for Kingstonian. This is nothing to do with the replay. Davy back in for Pruti. Uh, where is... Yeah, there's Wilson. Put you back in for Dunn. Who am I looking for? McGee. That's who I'm looking for. You're going to come in for Waldron O'Raw. 
He actually plays as an on gonch as well, which is cool. Um, Pretty on the bench instead of Wilkinson, that sounds good. And O'Keefe is almost ready to return. Almost. Very nearly. We'll switch to the 4231 pace again. So we're going to tear Kingstonian apart and then we're going to go beat Scunthorpe. And then whoever we get after that, I suppose. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm really happy with the uh, the way we played in that game, which might seem surprising, but did we have any poor performers? I don't even know if we did. Where would that be? Uh, has it even come up yet? No, it hasn't. So we got the scouting report before we've actually um, had the review. Interesting. Uh, you can tell I like, keep scouting Steve Lynch as well. Why not? Actually, that's something I was going to talk about today. Uh, this actually happened a few days ago now, but I'd already recorded last week's episode before the news broke, so I wasn't able to talk about it then. But uh, Stevenage have survived relegation. That's the main headline. Now, before I tell you what's happened, I will still say that all of us as Stevenage fans, we feel very, very lucky that we survived relegation because, in all honesty, we did not deserve to stay up. We were awful. We were the worst team by far in the league. We did deserve to go down. However, because Macclesfield did break the rules, they failed to pay their players on multiple occasions. The EFL appealed the original um, penalty, which was only a two-point deduction, which kept Macclesfield one point above Stevenage. Uh, because the EFL appealed it, it went to an appeals panel, which was on the 11th of August, and the independent panel there uh, agreed to... Um, deduct Macclesfield the remaining four-point penalty that was originally suspended for next season, but they agreed to implement it this season instead, or the season that's just finished, and therefore Macclesfield were relegated to the National League. Since then, Macclesfield have tried to appeal it, but have been unsuccessful. And again, at this point, I would like to say that Macclesfield fans, um, I do sympathise with you, and I do hope that you know next season your team is competitive again and you get back to the Football League where you rightfully belong. However, I do feel the right decision was made in the moment because the owners of the club broke the rules. The club itself has now paid the penalty for it. So it's a harsh verdict. As I said, we all feel very fortunate that Stevenage survived. Um, and it looks like we've learned our lesson in terms of moving forward. We've got some very, very good signings so far this summer. And fingers crossed, uh, we have a good season coming up. And uh, I do hope, as I said, that Macclesfield have a good season as well and get promoted again. And uh, do it the right way. Because I feel like these uh, these financial issues that Macclesfield have had go back two years to when they won promotion from the National League originally. Because um, even then there was talks about them going bust. And then the first season they survived, but they didn't pay Sol Campbell, who was their manager at the time. And even now I think he's taken them to court over it. Uh, and then this season they just decided to stop paying their players. Uh, and again, not the club as such, but the owners, the people in charge, decided to, to not pay the players on time and caused a lot of issues there. Right, in terms of the uh, the feedback, Nixon was our best player, 6.9. From what I saw of him, you know, 100% tackled one. He only made four mistakes. I don't know if that's good or not, actually. Four mistakes is, sounds quite high. Um, but yeah, winning the ball back, great first touch. Distribution was good as well. Zekov was the worst performer. So I'm hoping for the replay O'Keefe is, is going to be back. That would be ideal. Uh, this is Kevin Wallace. I think he came through the youth of the table. Look at his finishing. This is so good. Yes, he came through the youth of the table. So he hasn't actually played for us yet. I'm trying to loan him out to get some more experience. But uh, oh boy. Oh boy, is he uh, one for the future. Right, FA Cup draw is being made. So we'll find out who we would get in the second round were we to beat Scunthorpe in the replay. And then onwards and upwards. Uh, Baz, I thought I said Brentford then. Basford or York. So it's kind of another middling type draw. I suppose it depends which of the two we get. York are a pretty big team. Nothing against them. Uh, these are all scouting reports that I sent out to Berry and Stevenage and sort of teams in and around where we are right now. I might as well keep, keep scouting you because you look quite good. Alright, Kingstonian. Is it even worth looking at this? Whitnall, Wilkinson, Whitnall. I think Ekpiong and uh, Davy will wipe the floor with them, to be honest. Actually, I was going to show you the schedule as well to show you how we've done in matches. It's not 
not been the greatest season so far. Like, we haven't had our massive amounts of dominance like we normally do. We had a 2-1 defeat here to Bromley. We've had a few draws, like a 0-0 here against Gainsborough, 2 all against Tonbridge, 1 all against Wealdstone, 2 all against Maidenhead, the 0-0 that we just saw there, uh, a 1 all up here against Welling. It's not... It's not been overwhelming. This match here against Stevenage, this was the only time where we absolutely wiped the floor with someone. Even here, like beating Stourbridge 5-2, I think if you actually look at when the goals were scored, yeah, we were 2-1 down and then we came back into it. Oh no, we were we were one all and then we went 2-1 up, then it was 2 all, and then we scored again. Um, but yeah, the Stevenage game was just... I don't know what happened that day. They've got a really bad team, I'll admit that. They haven't got the best uh, squad. But um, two goals from Davey, a goal from Galbraith, and three from Carter. Carter scoring a hat-trick against his former club. Something went well there. Something went very, very well there. Actually, Galbraith is scoring goals for us at the moment. He scored two goals in nine games this season so far. I'm very, very happy with that. He's still got plenty of room to grow. Uh, his pace is improving as well, which is excellent to see. His crossing and his dribbling is also improving. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. Very happy. Looking forward to seeing him tear defences apart in the not-too-distant future. I reckon him and King could easily rotate right up into the Football League and perhaps even beyond. And that, that is the plan for both wings, really, is to not just have a single winger that always plays, but to rotate it a little bit more. It's one of the reasons why I've... Um, created the match plan for aerial and for pace because it's nice to have different strategies to do different things I'm just checking Twitter whilst I'm doing this as well because I'm waiting for some news on something uh, to do with Newcastle not not broken yet there's kind of a little teaser of it this morning but it's not official yet so I won't talk about it just yet in case it doesn't happen um, there was something else I was going to mention as well, and I can't remember what it was. I guess we'll just move on. Right. Uh, homegrown players. It's always nice to see quite a few homegrown players. That it really is the point of this entire series, is to grow your own, as it were. So I am, I am signing a few more players now, because the youth intake isn't as impressive, and because the finances aren't the greatest either, uh, we can't afford to upgrade... The, uh, the youth facilities and I don't really want to cheat it um, you know I don't really want to give the club money that it wouldn't otherwise have financially we're on 297 quid Jesus Christ uh, a cup run here would be very nice let's put it that way the uh, the biggest expense is wages we're spending 15,232 pounds a month on wages mind you we're making us on gate receipts 22,893 Oh, hang on a minute. How's that so high? 41,000. 6,000 on bon oh, okay, bonuses and staff wages. Mm, so that's 12 grand. Maybe even 13, actually. Oh, that's well into the 13,000. Another 4,000 down here on tax. Who pays tax, am I right? Uh, so we're making 22,000 on gate receipts. We do need more crowds coming in. Uh, especially now we're ground sharing with Boreham Wood, it'd be nice if we actually used the bigger ground and filled it a bit more. There's no social distancing in this game. There might not be social distancing in real life football for much longer either, because this talks about pilot schemes and everything. Getting fans back into non-league grounds. I don't like that idea myself. I think we're we're using our heads, uh, hearts over our heads again. Obviously I want fans to be present at football matches, but... Um, I think the smaller a ground is, the more likely it is that people won't social distance, and that's how viruses spread. Plus, you have the thing of lower league grounds don't necessarily have segregation. You just stand on opposite sides of the, the pitch to one another. So imagine if you've driven down from, say, York to play Hatfield, and, I mean, Hatfield doesn't even have stands. It's just a field with a fence around it. So you stand on the other side of the fence. If you're mixing with people from York, York fans, why did I say people from York? If you're mixing with York fans and you are a carrier of the virus and you don't know it, you might not suffer from it. You may be asymptomatic, but you might be carrying the virus. You can transmit that virus onto them, who then drive back to York, and suddenly the virus is spreading around the country again. 
That's why I think it's a bad idea. Uh, and I think... Because little clubs can't afford testing equipment. It's just impossible. So... I don't know how you regulate it. I really don't. And then you've got the matter of... Especially smaller football league clubs, if they're letting fans back in. Yes, they're getting gate receipts, which helps towards their overall revenue. But you're probably then paying twice as much as normal on stewarding. Because you've then got to have extra people walking around making sure people are standing the correct distance apart. I don't think financially it's a good idea. And I certainly don't think health-wise it's a good idea. I, I think it's going to be difficult at lower, lower, lower league grounds, but, uh, you know, the Football League, Sky has the broadcast rights, and there's a thing called iFollow, which is uh, live streaming of matches. BT own the rights to the National League, uh, and I think, you know, most, most National League stadiums are ex-Football League stadiums, so they do have... Are you a target man by any chance? Um, so they do have, like, camera facilities, camera rigs, so they could potentially, BT for example, could potentially uh, use their broadcasting abilities. All you need are the local radio commentators, tap that audio into the camera that's normally being used anyway because clubs make highlights videos these days, uh, and then you can stream it. You can stream it via BT's website or you could stream it via the club's website, whichever way it will. You know, whichever works best. I think that would be a really good system for the National League. I don't know about North and South, because I don't think anyone owns the broadcast rights to that. And then once you get down below that level, it starts to get a little bit tricky again. But there, there are ways of doing it where, you know, fans can pay a one-off fee and they're able to watch the match. And you give half of the fee to the broadcast people and then you give the other half to the club. So they are making money. It might not be a huge amount, but they are making money. But, I mean, some teams are selling season tickets now already and Steven's just starting to sell season tickets now they've got a plan in place for how it's going to work there's a priority system um, but what if you accidentally sell more tickets than your capacity who do you then decide is allowed in to watch matches I don't know I don't as I said I don't know how you regulate it uh, right are you a target man no you're an advanced forward but you are ishy pace and ishy stamina not strength you are MK Dons Ooh, you did actually play for them in League One. Wow, seven goals in 33 games. Mm. Damn, it's tempting to sign you. I'll keep you for the week and see what happens. I really want to get into this Kingstonian match. I've had to turn my air conditioning on because I could smell burning. Uh, I've got my, my old hard drives that I use for storage. I've put on top of my new PC and I think I'm blocking one of the cooling vents. That might be one of the reasons why... I don't know. Maybe I was getting that beforehand, actually. Let me just move these and see if that fixes the problem. If you hear a loud crash and a bang, it's because I've dropped it. Uh, let's try and do this without unplugging anything, because I am currently capturing to this hard drive. What are you stuck on? There we go. That might help. Oh, no. The wire's not long enough. Okay, that one's going to have to stay where it is. I'll move you there. Jobs are good. God, it's dusty in here as well. Jesus. Right. Andronicus Giorgio. Probably not good enough for us, unfortunately. Uh, Elliot List. He's definitely good. For, I mean, look at his pace. 15 pace. 15 pace. I think he's actually faster than that in real life. He is rapid. He's so fast. Keep scouting. Who's he at at the moment? Filed. Mm. Can't really afford him. Nugent. Now he's available on a free transfer. He's he's tall. <laughs> I mean, that's his... I, obviously, he's good in other areas too, but tall is the uh, the word I would use to describe Ben Nugent. Very tall. But let's find out just how very tall. You are... I saw it just now. I'm sure I saw it just now. Attributes, yeah. 194 centimetres. 194 centimetres. That is tall. Let me work out how, mu how much that is in feet and inches. So, 194 divided by 2.5. So, that's 77 inches, which is, divided by 12, 6.4 feet. He can't be 6 foot 4. No. I don't know. It doesn't really work because there's 12 inches in a, a foot, not 10. So, decimal places doesn't really work very well. 
Let's pretend I didn't do that. Botched maths. I always work from six foot when I'm working in uh, from centimeters to feet. I always do it as six foot and then go up or down. So obviously 197. So that's 17 inches more than six foot. No, that's not right. 17 centimeters more than six foot. So you divide 17 by two and a half, which is approximately. Uh, let's see. There's um, six. Lots of two and a half goes into 15. So seven. Six foot seven. I probably could have looked it up on Google quicker than that. He's around six foot seven. He's tall. I, I should have just stuck with tall, shouldn't I? He's very tall, is old Ben. I believe he's left Stevenage now in real life. I think we let him go at the end of the season. We let pretty much everyone go at the end of the season. I think I, I mentioned that last time as well. But we've made some very good signings. I'm very, very happy with the signings we've made. One of the ones I'm most impressed with is Luke Prosser, who was Colchester's captain last season. They got to the playoffs playoff semi-finals uh, and he was there for three years as captain in fact he might have been there longer but he was three years as captain and um, now he's joined us so I don't know why Colchester let him go whether it was his decision or the clubs and I don't know what Ravel said to him to get him to join us maybe they're old mates maybe they're former teammates but uh, something's been said because he's joined us and everyone's very very happy uh, Chandansing there getting his debut for Mauritius very nice the Academy. Oh yeah, the Academy won a trophy again last season. I was very happy with that. They won 3-0 here against Hadley. I was trying to read that then. Oh yeah, Hadley reserves. Lane, Gregory and Ward all scoring goals. They've all played in the first team as well, so I'm very happy with that. Right, lineup. Let's have Robertson in goal. We might have to start looking for a new goalkeeper. He's not made any mistakes yet, but I mean, I, again, I'm looking at his star rating and now that I, I knew the star rating wasn't the best way of determining a player's ability and potential, but now I know a little bit more about it because I thought it was always your coach's ability, uh, your coach's opinion of their ability, but it's actually a little bit more than that. It's compared to other players in your squad as well. So, for example, Brunt, he is a three and a half star rated midfielder at the moment, but let's say Vincent suddenly starts improving again. Brunt's star rating might start to go down because it levels out. So it's not Brunt's getting worse, it's just the other players around him in his position are getting better. So therefore, in comparison, his star rating isn't as high as it was before. Brunt isn't quite there for his debut yet. He, I'd like him to build up his um, match fitness a little bit more. So I think we're going to stick with this lineup. It's kind of a warm-up for the Scunthorpe game as well, as far as I'm concerned. Although I'm going to put Street on the bench instead of Dunn, just to rest Dunn somewhat. And, yeah, I don't think there's anyone else I'll bring in. I think we're good to go. Let's play some football. This should be a comfortable win. I'm not going to say an easy win, but it should be a comfortable win. Like a 1 or a 2-0. That kind of thing. Kingstonian are... Where are they in the table? They are 14th. So not, not the worst. Uh, I have realised that this is supposed to be a league table. Can I just get rid of... Like, it still appears in the background. That's really, really annoying. Oh, wow. Carter on for Vincent already. What was that, 19 minutes in? If that. Poor old Vincent. Are we going to see a highlight? I'm going to turn this to extended, just so we see some highlights. Wow, I mean, that's the first half pretty much gone. And not a single highlight. Wow. Maybe not a comfortable win. Maybe just a win. <laughs> Maybe just a win. Wow. Do my team want to play today? Oh, here we go. A highlight. Okay, Davy on the ball. Goes forward. Headed away. I look like we were about to win it back then. Who's come on now? Uh, Richmond on Zekev, uh, Zekov off. Oh boy. Are we going to end up losing this? Baba Jiddy there with the goal. 
That's a nice surname. Rolls off the tongue quite nicely, actually. It's one of those ones it looks really intimidating to say, but when you actually say it, it's nice and easy. Assuming I'm saying it correctly, of course. He's there number 10, so the other guy must be the tall guy. He's kind of the, the fast running in behind kind of guy. Little and large strike partnerships. I used to be a huge fan of those. I'm not against bringing it back. Again, that's why having a target man in your team can be good, because you can have someone running off them then. Does no one want to tackle that guy? Bloody hell. McGee's free kick straight at the keeper. Pruti has come on. Ekpiong's gone off. That's an interesting choice. Very interesting choice. I would quite like us to um, score a goal, please, chaps. Robertson with the kick finds Richmond. Again, that, that looked like a, a punt and hope, but that was a measured pass there from, uh, from Robertson. And again, great header from Carter to Nixon. Asking a lot of Wilson there, but he does get onto it, and that was that was a real whiffer of a shot, that was. Look at this, though. On his swinger as well. Finds Carter. Bloody frame lag. Bloody frame lag. I'm going to Google that. I am going to Google that. I think I know how to describe the problem enough to find a solution. I think. Alright, Lynch with the throw. Finds McGee. Back to Lynch. Crosses it in. That was a good ball. Oh. Wilson offside. Who's up front? Why did they put King up front and move Wilson? What is going on with my tactics? Got players moving all over the place. Why is O'Loughlin now up front? I don't know what's going on. McGee on the free kick. Goes for the top corner. That was a good save by the keeper. Alright, we've got two up top now. We've got O'Loughlin and Wilson. I'd have put... Mm, actually, that wouldn't have worked, really, would it? Maybe Carter could have played up front. And then O'Loughlin in midfield. I guess O'Loughlin can play as a striker. It is one of his positions. Even if he isn't very good at it. Maybe McGee actually would have been better. Because then O'Loughlin's better in the midfield role. Hmm. Alright. Three up top, anyway. We're going for it now. King, Wilson, O'Loughlin... This is the Uber, the new Uber attacking formation. This is one of the other tweaks I made in the match plan. Was some of the uh, the formations weren't what I thought they were going to be, so uh, I've tweaked them to make them a little bit better than what we originally had. Wow, I've never seen a goalkeeper kick it too long before. King running in behind. That was a good block by the defender, although he did kind of telegraph it, King. Made it a bit obvious where he was going. Lads, we should not be losing this game. We really should not be losing this game. Wilson's cross. Intercepted before it could reach Carter. And that's a corner kick. Which I'm guessing McGee is taking, yes. Into the middle. Keeper came. Changed his mind. Richmond now. Where's Richmond playing in all of this? DM. Really? Sure. Lynch with the interception. Plays it back to Robertson. We need to get it forward, guys. We need to get it forward. There we go. Big kick. That was easy for the defender. We seem to be kicking it into the gap between our players. Like between the, uh, the advanced midfield and the, the defense midfield. I wouldn't call them attacking midfielders per se. Advanced is probably a better word for it right now. They're kind of running rings around us right now. That was a really good goal. That was a good team goal. They just exploited the gaps. Apart from changing the formation and, and be having better players, it's not a great deal we could have done about that. Like this here, playing it out wide like this, and then cutting it back. This is kind of what Leipzig do. That's just a good strike. 
That really should be where O'Loughlin stands during those phases of play. On the edge of the box. Or, you know, whoever's playing as the, the DM should be standing on the edge of the box there to stop that kind of thing from happening. And he just dropped a bit too deep and opened up the space. And that's full time. There was me thinking we were going to win 2-0. We ended up losing 2-0. That's not good, is it? That's not good at all. Now we've got to go into an FA Cup replay. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, Ruthless Kingstonian Surprise Hatfield. That is a thing that happened. Faces Inquest. Come on now. I've lost my golden touch, apparently, because we lost our seven-game unbeaten record. <laughs> That's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? That is a bit ridiculous. The media, they just love a story where they can smell blood. Oh, balls. Wilson suspended. Oh, balls. Yeah, that's, that's, um... Oh, balls. Okay. That is an issue, because Wilson might be suspended for this match. And I was really hoping he would spear the attack. Hmm. I mean, do I... I could switch and go 4-4-2 and quickly set up a match plan for the 4-4-2 aerial. I don't know. This is going to be a tricky decision. You're good. Too bad you're too good. Yeah, he's suspended. Balls. I mean, Woodson. It's going to have to be, isn't it? We're going to have to go aerial. We could still go pace, I suppose, and just have Woodson as the target man still. I'm going to put Carter in for McGee. And, I mean, Hunt should be back now, yeah. So I'm going to put Hunt in for Vincent. And who else have we got in midfield? Brunt for O'Loughlin. You can play as a Mazea set to support. Um, yeah, I think it's going to have to be this. Oh, yeah, Davey can't play either, so it's going to be Pruti in for Davey. And then Wilkinson, wherever you are, in for Davy as well. <clears throat> maybe um, maybe McGee in midfield? I don't know if that'll work, though, because he's not really a, a central midfielder. He's an attacking midfielder. No, we'll, we'll try this. We'll try this. So Robertson in goal. Nixon, Pruti, Ekpiong, Lynch. And then Hunt, Brunt. That rhymes. King, Carter, Zekoff. I'm going to swap Zekoff for Richmond. There we are. And then Wooten up front. Bench is Whitnell, Wilkinson, McGee, Zekoff, Street, Dryden, and Waldron O'Rourke. Yeah. I, I, apart from, again, making massive tweaks, maybe even trying a 4-4-2, there isn't much else I can do, I don't think, that would uh, make a difference here. One other thing I want to check, actually, is Stuart Ward. What is your position? Are you a striker? You are a striker. Not a great one, though. How can you have someone who's accomplished in this position but have no real skills in any of those positions? You could play as a deep-lying forward, I suppose. Maybe I'll play you instead. Nah, I think that's too much of a risk. Wooten used to play for Scunthorpe. He might still remember how they play, if they've got the same manager and players, of course. And we are currently four years ahead of time, so that's highly unlikely. But you never know. Plus, it's been a while since he played. He's got the uh, he's got the batteries charged. He might be able to throw himself around a little bit, be the target man that I wanted him to be. And he's not bad. Again, players who drop out of my team, I don't necessarily drop them because they became bad. It's more I drop them because someone else became good. 
And then it's a case of, you know, as ruthless as it sounds, you want to play the best players every time. And if the best player is no longer the best player, they no longer play. It's as simple as that, really. It is telling me that Lynch might need a rest. I'm thinking of the goals that we conceded. One of them was the tactics. That's a different matter. What was the other goal? I'm trying to remember that one now. What was the other goal we conceded? Oh, wasn't it? Yeah, guy running in behind. So if we can stop that. I think the stronger midfield. Hunt and Brunt. Again, that rhymes. But having those two in the midfield, we didn't have that against Kinstonian. Uh, Vincent is very much the uh, the playmaker, which he wasn't doing because he wasn't taking set pieces. Um, and then, you know, O'Loughlin was just... I'm going to say he was tired rather than he had a bad game. I'm going to say it was fatigue that cost him. Uh, Hole, by the way. Tor Tora Holler. Uh, he's having a great time at Loughborough. Five assists and six goals in 19 appearances. He's having an absolutely beautiful time there. Average rating of... Why does it say that? It used to say that on this screen. I'm sure. Oh, there you go. 7.03. It was a different colour. I couldn't see it. I just need to get used to the skin. Where everything is and what colour things are. I like the fact that they've colour coded it. Don't get me wrong. I think that's very handy. But I still need to learn what each colour is. Because I keep missing things and it's just, yeah. Alright, so we're going to play this game against Scunthorpe. And then I think if we've got time, we're going to play the, the other FA Trophy match against Hendon. And then that will be the end of the video, I would say. So far, a bit of a hit and a miss. You know, the draw. I don't mind draws in cup games when there's a replay involved, but a draw overall is so boring. Especially a nil-nil draw. Whereas, you know, if you can uh, get a sneak a win or something like that, that'd be awesome. And then the defeat, of course, didn't help things. O'Keefe still not quite there yet. I can't remember what his injury was. Was it a broken leg? Something like that. I'm not going to faff around with the team. I'm just going to set him up like this and away we go. We have a, a pretty weak bench. That might be something I'll have to address as the season goes on. I will have to start thinking about moving some players on soon as well. Because a lot of these players now are on wages uh, rather than non-contract. So it's a case of either... Uh, devolve their contract back to non-contract so we only pay them when they play and then we're not spending money on them when they're not playing or um, just get rid outright get rid of them and get them off the wage bill completely there are there are a couple of players who I think we could perhaps consider moving on uh, you could have headed that back to your goalkeeper there Hassan it got back to him eventually maybe that was his plan all along I doubt it though. They got a different team this time. They've changed as well. Alright, come on Alex. He's done very well to hold on to that. And then he goes and does that. Well, at least Brunt's got it. Ball over the top. Into the run of King. Yes! Come on. Do you know what? I was about to criticise King for controlling that rather than crossing it first time. He somehow, somehow managed to pull off one of the crosses of the season from that position. This ball here from Brunt, I don't think he aimed that. Maybe he, you know, in training you might know where your teammate's going to run. The defender there probably should have cleared that. And that is a great header from Carter. That's why he was in the team. It's all tactics, you see. It's all tactics. And their response is to move Burgess two yards further up pitch. Because it was him being too far up the pitch that allowed Brunt to win the ball back in the first place. So, you know, just move him a little bit further up and then he might give the ball away again. Ball in. Good commanding there from Robertson. Pretty, that's a nice pass. Robertson kind of threw him under the bus a little bit there, but he's pulled out a great ball there to Richmond. Oh my days. Richmond is one of the players I'm considering moving on, by the way. Just a little spoiler alert. Uh, and passes like that is one of the reasons why. He had his time in the sun. He had a good season for us. And now he's just completely lost the ability to play football. 
He did have an injury. I suppose that might have contributed to it. But still, you expect certain levels from players. And his have just dropped so much. Good block. Who was that? That was Pretty. That was a very pretty challenge from Pretty. Corner coming in from their Wilson. One of their Wilsons. They appear to have two. Headed over the top. No problem there. How are we winning this game? What, where are the stats? Where are the stats? Why did I move the stats? There we go. Uh, yeah, we still have... I think this is because the league table isn't always visible, when you're, especially when you're playing in cup matches like this. So it, it like defaults to something. Even though it's, it's still got like a mix of everything here. I'm just going to put Adams' feedback here, because that's what it always defaults to. We don't need a league table here, because I don't really use this. I tend to watch the matches in full when I'm off camera. So I don't need to see the league table in this view, because I very rarely see this view. So I think we'll just do this. Pell with a free kick. That is his specialty, Mr. Boyband himself. And he's put it straight in the wall. He takes free kicks like Ronaldo as well. It's ridiculous. I mean, Ronaldo takes free kicks very well. But when you're a League 2 player and you've got your bleach blonde hair and you're standing there with the Ronaldo pose, you know, when he has his feet shoulder width apart and his hands down, pointing straight down at the ground, you just think, what a tit. Especially when he kicks it straight into the wall like that as well. The first time we saw him was me and my dad. We went to see Steamish play Cheltenham at Cheltenham. And he spent the whole game taking free kicks like that. And didn't even get close to scoring. And then in like the 91st... That was a good goal. The 91st minute, we win a free kick. And Joe Martin just sticks it straight in the top corner directly in front of us. And do you know what? He didn't take a free kick like Gareth Bale or Ronaldo or... You know, Kevin De Bruyne. He took a free kick like Joe Martin. And he scored it. That that goal is entirely on uh, Ekpion. This here is a good run and a good finish. But Ekpion. Big mistake. And that doesn't happen very often. Whitnall has come on for Lynch to play at left back. Hunt here with the corner. That's a goal. Yeah. Woodson. Ekpiong has basically redeemed himself there. There you go. Woodson scoring against his former club. I think he did join us from Scunthorpe. Oh, no. He joined us from Notts County. Or did he? I don't know. I don't actually, don't actually know. Look at that. He's basically stolen Ekpiong's goal there. <laughs> but do you know what, Hassan? In my eyes, you have redeemed yourself there. Because that header at the back post was absolutely sensational. You made it easy for Wooten. Let's put it that way. You made it very easy for him. The main thing is, the important thing is, we're winning the match again. Stats-wise, shots on target, we're doing very, very well. Shots in general, they're doing very, very well. Uh, Wilkinson has come on for Ekpion. Interesting. Very interesting that they've done that. Yeah, we've had eight shots, six on target. One clear-cut chance. I'm assuming it's only a clear-cut chance if you don't score it. Ooh, oh, oh, I thought that was going to sneak in. And again, you didn't see it. That's really annoying. Maybe it'll show a replay. The keeper made that tricky for himself. Let's just say that. Hunt with the corner. Carter here, finds Pruti, Brunt to Carter, back to Brunt, that's a nice pass to Hunt, shoot, oh, good block, Wilkinson now, I didn't think he was going to get that, actually I thought he was leaving it, but no, he did get it, Boyband's just been booked, I think Carter, yeah there we go, Carter off Dryden on, interesting, I thought it might have been McGee, Whitnell throws to Brunt, who's lost it straight away to their second Wilson, C. Wilson. Cameron, I believe his name is. Please someone tackle him. Please someone tackle him. And don't just collapse at his feet and let him run past. 
Good save, Robertson. Get the rebound as well. Block it. Block it. Block it. Oof. Lucky, 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 lucky. Very lucky. That was a good save. This, lucky. If Wilson had headed that back across goal to the two in the middle, that would have been... I'm sure they would have scored it. I'm sure they would have scored it. There we go. We're going the smiley face route now. We're getting near the end. They're making their final shuffles of the deck as well. All right, he's outside the box. Tackle him. Now he's inside the box. Don't tackle him. Ooh, okay. All right. He kept it out. He kept it out. I'm sure that one came up on the video. See number 88? Jesus Christ, man. I mean, you are Italian. I suppose that's the thing they do over there, isn't it? They just choose random numbers between one and a million. And that's what goes on the back of the shirt. Good clearance, Nixon. We've got Richmond playing wing back. Wilkinson playing wing. That's dangerous. Hunt and Brunt, then Dryden King and Woodson still up front. There we go. This is what I call the cluster... I wouldn't say that, actually. The cluster contingent of players. We just flood the midfield in the defence now. Woodson up front on his own, just in case we do have a counter-attack. You watch. They'll just penetrate straight through. Come on. Come on. Tackle him. Tackle him. Oy vey. I thought he was going to score that then. Hoo, 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 hoo. Wow, the, the name of this song is so long, it fills the entire screen. <laughs> Gee whiz. Good block, good clearance. Come on. King's now up front, Wooten's moved back. Brute force. Still got two minutes plus injury time. One minute plus injury time. Oh, it's squeaky bum time. They're just getting more and more shots away now. Still only four on target. Oh, cleared off the line. Good good play, Whitnall. Tackle him, please. Four minutes. Oh, my God. Four minutes added. Great header. Great block. Come on. So who have we got now? Robertson in defence. Wilkinson at Robertson in goal. Wilkinson, Nixon and Pruti in defence. Brunt and Whitnall as the wing backs. I think. I oh, know Richmond still is the wing back. Oh, good save. <laughs> Brunt, Whitnell, Hunt and Richmond as the defence midfield type players and the wing backs. And then we got um, Woodson and Dryden as the central midfielders and King up top. I like King up top actually. A little bit of extra pace. So if we do just thump the ball long. Because he's him being there is forcing someone to stay back. Here we go. Look. So he gets the ball now and he, he's got more pace because he's a natural winger. And he, can, he seems to be able to hold it up as well. So it just gives them something to think about when set pieces are coming in the box. Don't back heel it, you moron. Lads, we seem to be getting further and further towards our own goal again. Are we, just, are we seriously wasting time in the centre circle? That is a very ballsy move. Around the corner. Yes. Turn. Run. Do something. All right, play it back. Yeah, we're doing short passing now. Yes! Come on! What a result. What a result. That's going to keep the coffers full for a little bit. £41,000 we got for that. That is awesome. What a result. 2-1. That was fantastic. The goals were a bit messy. Carter's goal was very good. Wooten's was a bit messy. Uh, their goal was also pretty good, apart from the defensive error from us. But again, McAtee did very well to actually get the ball run with it, score the goal. You've still got to finish it. He, it wasn't like he lost it. Ekpion didn't lose it on the penalty spot or anything. You know, was, he still had to run like 30-odd yards before he could shoot. Carter with a slight injury. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, York in the cup now. And it's going to be played away from home. At the is it still the Kit Kat Crescent? No, the York Community Stadium. Okay. 
So matches getting rearranged. So if I look at the finances again, no, yep, finances. Twenty-seven thousand in the green. Cha-ching. Gate receipts as well, up to thirty-two thousand. Prize money, forty-one thousand three hundred and fifteen pounds. That's a really specific number. You'd think it like forty-two and a half thousand or something like that, but nope. Forty-one thousand three hundred and fifteen. I think the next episode I record here, it will either be the aftermath of the player sale or it will be the beginnings of the player sale. Because again, tactics, uh, not tactics, transfers is something that um, I'm going to be focusing on a little bit more now. Wheeler dealing, I suppose, is the right word. Bringing in a young player for l as little money as possible, developing them for a couple of years and then selling them on. We kind of did that with Fitzhugh. You know, we brought him in for, I think, 10,000. We sold him for 31,000. So, I mean, take wages out of it we've made a profit. Include wages, we've probably lost about £20,000. But, no, that's football. 816 people attended the match. That's our new attendance record. It's considerably higher than the 687 we had before. And the £16,000 in gate receipts as well. That's, that's a big one. That is a big one. I would like to get to Wembley in the FA Trophy. Uh, which, I mean, the FA Trophy sounds hard, but the National League is the highest division in which you can enter the FA Trophy. So we're only one level below the highest level of the FA Trophy. And you look at what we just did to Scunthorpe. If we treat every game like that, there's no reason why we can't go to Wembley. And that would be massive for our finances. We're going to make so much money if we went to Wembley and sold like 20,000 tickets. We'll probably only sell like 10. And I don't mean 10,000. I literally mean 10. I'm going to bring you in on a longer trial because I want to have a better look at you. Which, again, sounds dodgy when taken out of context. But, yeah, I mean, some of these stats, they do look impro like 12 dribbling. That is good. I might bring you in and get rid of Street. We'll see. Okay, Hendon. Who are Hendon? What are Hendon? What is Hendon? Uh, so, Wooten's heading ability may help to exploit their heading. Uh, so I guess we'll stick with the same tactic. That's the only time we're players named. Oh, Whitnell there as well for work ethic. I might put Whitnell in at left back and rest Lynch. I'm also going to rest uh, Carter. So Waldron O'Rourke is going to come in for Carter. I'm really happy that Waldron O'Rourke is still developing. Really happy with that. Davy, excuse me, Davy back in for Pruti. And then Pruti on the bench instead of Wilkinson. Sorry, Luke, you played skin out. Played your skin out? What the hell? You played out of your skin, but um, he's better. O'Keefe is actually going to return on the bench instead of Carter. So we've got Dryden and O'Keefe, who are basically twins. When you look at their positions they play. Um, and then, yeah, Whitnell in at left back to give Lynch a bit of a rest. And Wilson back, of course, on the bench instead of Street. There we go. We're ready for Hendon. Which is going to be, as I said, the last video of uh, the last video, the last match of the video. I've lost the ability to speak today. I should I check the scout list? I'm really in the market. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when you're getting promoted into the football league is not having a good striker. So, oh wow, this is very populated. I might have to trim this down a little bit um yeah having a good strike at that i cannot stress that enough it's all well and good like i know i say that if you're not scoring enough goals the first place you should look is your midfield but honestly if you've got like a two-star rated striker and you're you're going into league two for the first time you are not going to score any goals you need at least a two and a half if not three star striker and then you need the midfield to actually supply them as well so i mean having asanganyi here I'm really tempted. I am really tempted. But even some of the players up here. Like we've we've only got da uh, Davy on loan for the season. I don't even think there was an option to extend it. So I should start looking at defence. Pruti was one of the reasons why. Uh, or one of the things from that. But I mean this guy here. Are you for sale? If I could sign him. That would be awesome. I don't know. Let's focus on the Hendon match. We're only in November. Maybe when we get to January, I'll start looking a bit more at uh, at what I'm doing. Yeah, leading Sky Bet League 2 striker. 
that's the kind of thing you want. So we're still we're still a season and a half away from the football league, assuming we still get promotions both times, of course. But you do want to start planning ahead now, because your ambition is to get promoted. Let's be honest. No one enters a league not wanting to win it. Obviously, like, realistically speaking, you're not expecting to win every single division you enter. But there's always that ambition of, I want to win this. And if you haven't got that, you shouldn't be in the, the game to begin with. Yeah, they don't want to sell him. I doubt they want to loan him either. And we we don't really have the power to muscle Barnet like we do uh, Morden and Tiptree, for example. I don't know, they were still on my mind from earlier. But I'm not, I'm not going to fight Barnet. No point. The FPS has dropped to 5.29. Uh, what is going on? My PC is doing all kinds of weird and wonderful things now. I don't even know if you can hear me. I am still recording though, right? Yes, seems to be. Oh, I hate, I hate technology when it doesn't work. Bring back mechanical computers, is what I say. If you're watching this video, then the game didn't crash. Uh, if you're not watching this, which, I mean, how would you hear what I'm saying right now? But, you know, if you're not watching this, then it obviously didn't work. Smith's having a good time. Where's he? Biggles Wade. Eight goals, two assists in 18 games. Not bad. That's a goal a game, pretty much. Goal in a, a, goal every, a, a goal every game and a bit. Wallace yet to get off the mark, but he's only 17. Give him a chance. Two appearances, plus. So, he's getting there. I just realised the schedule. I'm playing Hendon on the Sunday, and then I'm playing on the Tuesday. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. That's going to be tough on the old legs. This is where having a good squad can come in handy. Uh, or a big squad, I should say, rather than a good squad. Because you can do rotating a little bit more. Right. Here we go. Fitness tests. So this looks to be the final qualifying round. Which is awesome. It'd be nice to get in the first round proper. Again, it's a really weird format, this tournament. Because we're only one... It's been like the championship having to qualify for the FA Cup each year. I'm not quite sure why they decide to do it like that, but they do. So there we go. Uh, I am going to do a little bit of rotating. I'm going to bring Matthews in for Nixon to give him a rest for the league match. I'm then going to bring... Uh, it's really tempted to bring Samuel back into the team, but in place of whom? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, actually, yeah, okay. I'm going to put O'Keefe instead of Zekov, and I'm going to put Samuel instead of Zekov. There we go. Let's do this. Last match of the video. Let's hope it's a good one. I just want Wooten to do the ugly stuff today. I want him to bully the defenders, set up chances for the uh, the more flair-minded players. And I want I really want Waldron overall to have a good game. All right, Whitnell, good control, all forward. Not great. Whitnell's throw to Waldron O'Raw. Back to Whitnell. Crosses it in. Not a bad ball, actually. King with the volley. Get in, son. That's what I thought he was going to do for the first goal against Scunthorpe. I thought he was just going to hit it in the box first time. See, so this, this cross, I thought he'd mucked it up for a second. Great layoff. And then ball comes in. Yeah, I thought you'd overhit it. But, you know, when you've got a guy at the back post like that, you can kind of get away with overhitting it. Particularly if you're playing against defenders who aren't the best in the air. Because they can then knock it back across. Not bad. Happy. Happy, happy, happy. Good start to the game. Any subs? Not yet. There, There's bound to be one coming up soon. Matthews crossing from this side this time. And Brunt with the shot. Ooh, hello. We had a go. S 
sub. Yep, McGee came on for Aldrin overall. Mm, I'd have liked him to have had more minutes. Apart from turning off subs, there's no real way to force that, though. He gets minutes. That's the thing. He does get minutes. It's a really weird way that we do it, but he does get minutes. Maybe I should just stick him on the bench again and put McGee in that role. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, kick forward from the keeper. Of course, he, he picked the one gap between my two players there. All right, Matthews, long ball over the top. That's a good one. Woodson, not the fastest and not the smartest either by the looks of things. He really should have held that up. I think I've got shoot more often turned on. That's why he did that. But he should have held that up. All right, let's just pass it around a little bit. We're under no pressure. Hassan, come on now. God, he's, he's even bombed the header. Crikey. So much power in the man. Just hits everything twice as hard as he needs to. Foster with the free kick. Straight as a die, but that actually nearly paid off. That nearly worked out for him then. I was a bit worried. Any more subs? Yep, Pruti and Wilson have now come on. Wooten and Ekpion going off. So if Archie Wilson is now on the pitch. Oh, we are still set up for pace. Of course we are. Oh, he went for the deft touch there. Great ball over the top. Was that Hunt or Brunt? One of them played that. That was a great ball. McGee now with the corner. Wilson's header, good save from the keeper. Oh, it was Davy. Crikey. I think it bounced a little too high for Wilson. If he'd caught that crisp on the volley, that would definitely have gone in. Alright, Hunt with the free kick. Davy's header. Not really challenging there. Not really challenging. Their turn to the corner. Oh, what are you doing? Who missed that? Who missed that? Do I get a replay? Yes, I do. Who missed that? Who aren't you? Brunt, you muppet. That could have been disastrous then. I mean, a 1 0 win is not great. I'll be honest with you. Not great. And that's not even confirmed yet. We've still got six minutes plus injury time. Wilson's stretching his legs here, though. This is good centre forward play. He's holding it up. He's bringing it into an area where he can pick out a teammate. That is very, very good centre forward play. Oh, I thought he'd scored. <laughs> I thought he'd scored that then. God, what a barnstormer that would have been. Alright, we're going with the cluster bomb midfield again. One of you, please tackle him. It's, it's like the... Um, oh, what's it called? The crowd... Crowd effect? Is that what it's called? No, it's the one where... If someone collapses in the street and everyone gathers around them, unless someone points to someone directly and says, you call 999, no one will because everyone thinks someone else has done it. I can't remember what the effect is called, but it's that kind of thing. So in this case, it's no one wants to tackle the guy because they think someone else is going to do it. Whereas in reality, not the case. Alright, Robertson goes long. Great touch, Wilson. Come on, come on. I mean, two shots there, not bad. He did really well to get into that position. He took it a little too wide. Is he offside? Yes. Archie! It's literally you and one other bloke. How did you not see where he was? What a, what a striker Wilson is, though. I'm so proud that he's a Hatfield lad. That's a foul. I'm not proud of you, McGee. That was stupid. Alright, defend like your lives depend on it. I cannot afford another replay. 
Right, over the top. That's it. That's time ref. 93 minutes. Yes! Two cup games and we won them both. Get in there. Well played. Well played, sirs. Well played. King with man of the match. I don't know if he deserves that, to be honest. I don't know. I mean, he scored the goal. But, I mean, seven is a very low rating. What did Wilson get? 6.5. Are you joking? That that one run he did on his own where he held the ball up, that was worth, like, at least a 7.5. All right. Another 4,000 from that. That just about covers uh, Carter's wages for the week. Uh, the board want us to get to the semi-final, so... Mm, here's hoping. we got Bath next. Oh, Christ. And we're playing at home. So it's going to be a big crowd. Big crowd. We have not lost to Bath in the last three meetings between us. When were those, though? Recently? Have we played Bath this season? No. Can I check recent meetings? Yeah, past meetings. There we go. Uh, did I just break the game? Clicking that. Please tell me I haven't broken the game. Please tell me I haven't broken the game. Oh, good. <laughs> right. So, last season. Oh, yeah, we played them twice. We beat them 3-0 on aggregate. And we beat them 3-2 in the Hatfield Cup semi-final back in 2022. So, before I do anything else, I'm just going to save the game. And I'm going to start wrapping up the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Actually, before I finish this, let's pause the music. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you enjoyed the series, drop some comments down below with ideas for tactics, signings, transfers, all that good stuff. Staff additions, um, tactics, match plans, all that good stuff. It'd be very much appreciated. And besides all that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.